transition Ready now? Okay, good evening and welcome to the Arundel Camera Club meeting for Thursday, January 11th. My name is John Milliker and I'm the club president for the 2023-2024 season. Uh, the Arundel Camera Club was founded in 1957 and exists to promote the art, science, and education in all aspects in fields of photography. For more information about us, please visit arundelcameraclub.org. Uh, we are happy that we are now meeting in person and online. If you are local to the Anne Arundel County, Maryland area, uh, we encourage you to visit us here at the Severna Park Baptist Church located at 506 Benfield Road, Severna Park, Maryland. Uh, before we move to tonight's contest, do we have any officer announcements? I see no hands. Oh, Ed, well, g give, give me a second because Christine's going to go through the schedule. Okay, I can. And then uh, she'll have you come up with that uh, for our exciting field trip. So let's bring up Christine real quick. Um, I want to reiterate the fact that after January 1st, our membership is 50% off. That brings it down to $20 a person. Uh, you get, uh, what's it take? Um, it takes three away from it, so you have still 42 opportunities to submit images throughout the rest of the year for great judge feedback and critique. Um, we also have a, uh, you know, we also have officers that may be looking to kind of pass the torch. If you are interested in any officer positions, please contact any of, uh, of the officers and we'll get you, get you set up to start learning that position. And I think that's all I have. So here's Christine, our program's chair, to talk about the schedule coming up. Good evening. The first thing we have coming up is this Saturday on January the 13th, we have a field trip to the Basilica of the National Shrine. Ed, do you want to tell us about it? It's going to be a wonderful, it's going to be a wonderful time. Ed, this is... Get you on camera, Ed. It's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful time. It's one of the largest churches in the world, and um, the thing is, we have a special one-hour tour. So I'd like everybody to meet at, in the lower church by the information desk at quarter of two, okay? And then we'll start the tour at two o'clock. So that's that's what I wanted to make sure everybody knows about. And then next month, we're going to go to the Peabody Library and also to the Walters Art Gallery. And I have a special tour for that for that also. So it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful two-month two, two month event. Thank you. Okay, next week we have a program by Chris Spielman. This is going to be a little bit different and I want everyone to know about this. He has asked that we not keep the Facebook Live live on our Facebook page. So as soon as the program is over, it will be deleted from our Facebook page. We are allowed to put it on a private link for members only and share that link once we get it up on YouTube, but it will not be public. So if you are not a member, you will not be able to access it after the end of the meeting next week. Just, just to add something in there, um, that, that applies to whether you're a paid member for contests or a free member, but you do need to go to our website and you need to fill out at least the free membership form. Get on our mailing list, and uh, I'm working with Mike Thomas, our webmaster, to get a page up that every year uh, maybe we'll change the password or something. That way people, free and paid members, will have access to that. We've got, a, we've got one or two more of those, I think, as well, that we emailed to people. But it'd be good to have a nice uh, online repository on the website. But I just want people to be aware of that. So next week's program will not be live after, will not be able to be seen on Facebook after the presentation finishes next week. It will not it will be live only. And then you will be able to see it on YouTube if you are on our mailing list. If you are not, you will not be able to see it. Um, February 25th is our next contest, which is our color and monochrome print contest, also with the theme of open like tonight's. February 1st, we have a program by our very own Harry Crossland on mirrorless cameras. And then on February 8th is our next digital contest on with the theme of sacred places, spaces. And that was is the upcoming schedule. Let me hand the, pro, the contest tonight over to Ron. Here you go, Ron. All right, thank you. All right, just a couple 
quick one uh, um, or two quick MPA notes. One is uh, the pictures, the display that goes at the House Office Building in Annapolis, going up tomorrow morning. That's for my uh, 8:30, 8:45 uh, job tomorrow morning, along with a couple other folks. Um, on February 2nd, uh, Tony Sweet's going to be doing a presentation on infrared, uh, with the usual. Um, uh, podcast, as they say, from MPA. So make sure you sign up for that if you want in advance. And uh, we got a spring conference for MPA coming up. Uh, usually, um, usually doing a spring, and I think you'll uh, find it to be really pretty interesting. Now, let's uh, talk about this evening. This evening, we've got uh, a judge that we've had here before. Uh, his name is Biddy Adam Mitra, and uh, you. You'll re remember him really well because he's very precise and uh, gives a lot of good information on each of the pictures. So, uh, Betty, I'm setting up some standards for you there, so sorry about that, some expectations. He's an infectious diseases scientist by profession. He currently is working at NH, NIH, and he's a photographer by passion, like a lot of us. His photographic journey started with a Fuji point-and-shoot camera he got from his dad as a high school graduation gift. The limitations, of course, a point-and-shoot camera uh, forced him to explore compositional ideas from his formative uh, days, seeking unique light and point of views to make photographs stand out, qualities that he found extremely helpful when he graduated to SLR and finally to DSLR in 2005. His first and foremost passion has been nature photography, inspired by masters like Ansel Adams and Sebastio Salgado. He has extensively traveled and photographed in the American West, also traveled and photographed across the globe with the intention of capturing stories of the places and the people in the images. After settling in the D.C. area, he joined the Gaithersburg Camera Club in 2014. I've um, judged over there before. It's a great group and a, a tough group to, uh, uh, to compete in. They opened a completely new world of uh, photographic uh, possibilities for him in 2014 that helped him to mature as a photographer. He enjoyed planning and shooting photographs for themed compositions, particularly to experiment with light and monochrome. Currently, Bidiata is one of the most successful members of the club, becoming a grandmaster in 2018 and winning six Photographer of the Year awards between 2017 and 19. He has won multiple awards in other competitions, including a first place award in the uh, 2019 MPA photo contest, and very recently won a grand champion uh, rosette at the Montgomery County uh, Fair photo competition. His photographs have been published in magazines and images have been also exhibited at numerous juried exhibits, including MPA exhibits in the Maryland State Senate and uh, the BWI Airport. Benny Adam considers his association with the Camera Club to be a major influence in his personal development as a photographer, and he believes in giving back to the club and various uh, capabilities, which includes uh, judging, as he has been doing for us for the last couple years. He also mentors newcomers uh, to his club as a member of the board. Recently, he discovered a new avenue to share his photographic experience and passion with fellow enthusiasts and the role of a C uh, MPA certified judge and uh, a photo critique. He does wonderful critiques, too. So uh, his web gallery, uh, here's a picture of him up here. His web gallery is uh, bidiatamitra.smugmug.com. And uh, we'll send that back out to you if you want to check that out. His, his work is just beautiful. You'll really enjoy it. So we're going to uh, do this this evening. Um, I have the list. John has uh, all the pictures. And John, I guess I throw it over to you at this point. Before I do that, should we ask uh, Bidi Adamitra if he uh, wants to say anything? Yes, thank you, Ron. I, I would really like to say something to uh, the audience before I start. Um, this is regarding uh, the judging, that, uh, the criteria that I would like to adhere to. Um, so first and foremost, let me tell you that I really admire the quality of work that the members of your club put up. And that's the reason I always like to come back. Because every time I come back, I see some of the greatest images, and that actually inspired me as a photographer. So that's my take on it. Um, however, whenever I had um, like judged you guys before, there were these competitions. This is an open competition. And frankly speaking, when I used to compete, 
the one that actually scared me the most was the open competition because over there, as a computer, you don't know what you want to put in because it's very difficult to have uh, like have apples being compared with oranges, and then it's the judge. The judge comes usually a lot of times come with biases. So what I'll try to do coming in to, to judge you is I'll try to leave any biases that I have outside so I can be really unbiased in what I do. But before I start, let me tell you what I'm going to look for. First and foremost, I'll, I would like to look at the technical aspects, which is basically composition, the light, the contrast, and uh, the color or tonality. Uh, if it's for a colored photograph, I'll look for the color, and then um, if it's a uh, monochrome, I'll look for the tonality. But above all, because I know that you guys put up some extraordinary work, what I'm going to look for is a wow factor. Show me something that I have never seen, or show me something that I have I see all the time, but I have not seen it the way you will show me. So wow me with that, and I know looking already previewing some of the images that there will be some images that are really stunners. So um, if I mess up again in the end, what I give is my personal opinion about an image. If you like something, you stand by it. All I give is my perspective, my comments. Um, you can use them to make it better. Or if you feel that I'm biased, please forgive me. If something wins, that is because your work is beautiful. If something does not, it could be my not me not understanding what you try to do. But I'll try to give an explanation of what I understand about your work or what I don't. So with that, I'm ready to start. Okay, let's get started then. I'm bringing up Lightroom now. Okay. Uh, we have the novice photos up. We have a total of 16. Mm -hmm. And what I will do is I will go through uh, and uh, number and go through the name. We'll yeah. go through all of that without any comments, and then uh, we'll go back to number one, and that's when you can give us comments and then in or out as well, okay? Okay. Here we go. Number one, the gondolier. Number two, Orioles fans filled Camden Yards. Number three, the instigator. Number four, caught in the moment. Number five, this is my catch. Number six, in plain view. Number seven, Myrtle. Number eight, Elegant. Number nine, Andean Condor. Number 10, Cream Poinsettia. 11, Spirit of the Woods. 12, Lazy Day. 13, Catch of the Day. 14, Not Seaworthy. 15, Skylight. And 16, Road to Sunset. I'm going to go back to image number one, and I'll be ready for you whenever you're ready. Okay, so before we, uh, we start, can you just uh, remind me how many do we need um, uh, from this file, like it's from Steam? Uh, we need first through fourth and uh, two honorable mentions. Okay, six. So let's start with number one, the gondolier in that case. Um, this reminds me of a waterway in Venice. A nice crisp morning, 
maybe, or our, our evening. And this guy, uh, who's enchanted, looking up, the gondolier, um, transforms me right there. There are some technical issues which are kind of bothering me. Otherwise, I, I was kind of intrigued by it. The color well, is done in an in a, in a in, intriguing way. Um, I think the muted color actually plays well. However, the perspective are a little skewed. So if you're taking a photograph like that, you can either try to make the building straight or you can fix that later on in, in Lightroom. So that's why it's kind of bothering me. Um, however, there are some things that are really working, like the, color, the muted colors are really working for me. I, I, I'm, and, and this guy standing over there looking up, um, bringing my attention upwards. So it, it, it sort of gives me a, a half story. Um, I would say, like, I would like to keep this one for now. Okay, you want to keep number one for now? Yes. Here we go, number two. Nice crisp morning at ball game time. Um, I can see a lot of people going by. Um, however, this is more like a documentary shot for me. Yes, it's festive time. Um, it, it, it's, it's fun time, but it's not appealing more than that. So um, when it's an open competition, like I said, it's very difficult for a judge to comprehend uh, or, or compare between um, images. And I, I'm, I'm, this one is not appealing me at an intellectual level. So that's why I'm taking it out. Otherwise, in terms of light color, it's, it's quite nice. Okay, number two is out. Number three. Okay, number three is, um, it's a fun, it's a really fun, um, Image to start with, uh, of, of obviously like somebody is instigating and somebody is coming back. Um, however, the problem that I saw over here is it's a gray crew, two gray animals against a gray background. Um, it's a la so the main subject is kind of getting lost in the background, sort of, and then um, the instigator. I can see the one of the poles going up, but the face is kind of hidden. Um, so there are lots of intents for a nice image, but it is not actually working out to the best of um, the possibilities. So I, I, I see a lot of good thought process. I, I see somebody trying to make an interesting image, but it's not there yet. And, and frankly speaking, with the rest of the images, it might not come up in the end. So that's why I'm taking it up. But I, I really applaud the um, effort from the image maker. Okay, number three is out. Number four. Glorious sunset, of course. Um, not that something that you see every day. Um, sun going down and gorgeous clouds. So the some of the clouds are reflecting that light. And there is drama in the sky, of course. And uh, the photographer has got two subjects photographing the same thing, which adds a little, um, I would say, context to the whole thing, uh, to the whole image. However, when I look into it, um, it seems that the whole thing is right where the sun goes in. And the um, other two people taking the shot, they are kind of a little dark. Um, so let me keep this one for a little longer. But if this one doesn't come through, I would say it's a lack of um, balance throughout the image because the left part of the sun is going down is really colored, vibrant, and the right side, where you have the two subjects, that where, that's where it's kind of modeled. Uh, my eyes go there, and it's kind of lacking something. So if it doesn't stand out in the end, it is because of that. Now, how we could get it better, maybe get a fill flash or something that 
could have been used to make it better. Again, is this something that you have in a field um, when you're shooting? Probably not. But now we are looking into an artistic image and it, it's competing with other images that will be, that are different. So in, in terms of quality, it might not stand out. But for the time being, please keep it. Number four is in. Yeah. Let me move over here. For the time being. Number five, this is my catch. Of course, somebody's got a prize. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite good. Um, so the one thing that I actually applaud about it is, is the eye of this bird. Um, when I looked into it, it's pretty sharp. And uh, so is the fish. Um, however, I'm not sure that this is the best angle to look into the bird. Like somebody is looking up from there. And uh, you see this thing. Um, but when I look, um, I look back into it, I see some of the other things that are um, adding to the whole image. There is a little shadow of the bird as well as the fish on the rock. Um, and the bird, I have, to, I have to say, is pretty much uh, is in focus. So I can, I can see the details of the, Feathers in the white, which is which is kind of good. Um, so let's skip this for a while and and see how it stands up against the other um, combination. Okay, number five is in. Number six. Well, this image kind of gave me a pause. Um, I was looking through the bunch, and then um, when I looked into it, it, it I. I, I stopped to take a look into it. First of all, I have to say that whoever has taken the picture has gone bold. Uh, going with a very shallow depth of um, focus is interesting, intriguing. And if you can do it well, you can. this, this can really transform into something that's creative. So um, if you look into this image, you'll see um, a part of it is really stacking focus. So the thing that goes over the eye, um, I'm not sure exactly what it is called. Um, that is in focus. And then the lips uh, uh, and the teeth, they are in focus. Um, I was hoping that the eye that's closer to us, or this person's right eye, that would have been a little bit more in focus. Um, that is where I'm struggling. Um, but otherwise, the left eye, uh, the other eye being out of focus, the hair, it comes and gives, gives a very artistic feel to it. And that's why I liked about it. And the composition where um, the right side is being kept a little vacant, um, it's, it's clean. This is also, that is catching my eye. I, I think this is where the photographer has done an experimentation, tried to do something different. The decision to go into monochrome is also very bold. So I, I kind of like it, and I would like to keep this one. Number six is in. Number seven. Okay. Again, this is someone's pet, and it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and it's happy. Um, happily sleeping. Um, so one thing is for sure, the idea of going into black and white is good. In, in the monochrome, it, it takes away from the distraction and you look into this animal and it's very well sharp. So the details are very much in there. But what is lacking is, is any drama in there. It's very serene. It's very quiet. Um, unlike the other cat image we saw, there was some action. Um, I wish that image was something like this, like that sharp. Um, so is, this is probably something great for your personal album or your personal collection, but I don't see that in a competition like this, um, this is going to stand up with the rest of the competition. So I'm taking it out, but I'm sure it's going to be a gorgeous, uh, photographic somebody's collection. Okay. Number seven is out. Number eight. Well, when I started looking into it, it gave me a pause. Um, I was like, 
what the heck, um, what is this? So if I look into, or if you guys look into the human picture, uh, like bigger part of this thing, it's quite intriguing. It's a dance pose. And this particular subject is probably um, is in an in a, in a motion uh, or in a position. So such like that, the hands are going again. So it's, it's a peculiar hand position. So it's, it's, it's kind of intriguing. And uh, the details and the backside, they are very well captured. What I'm struggling with is the rest of the dress. It's red or whatever that is. It's reflecting light. And it's kind of, the color is kind of modeled, at least on my screen, which is calibrated, by the way. Um, and also the way the dress is cut off on the side. Um, I wish you had worked a little bit more in bringing up the color of the dress. If it's red, it would have, if it would have been intense red or try to bring in the contrast, this would have been a much better image because I like whatever I see in the, in the, in the flesh color, the tonality in, in the, in the, in the body part. That was really well done. That image, that part of the image was exposed very well. The rest, the bottom part, the dress, that's where it falls off. So I'm kind of torn what to do with it. Um, let's keep it for a while and let's see how many we have and, 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 if it doesn't come up, it's probably due to um, the dress, the red dress part that I'm, I'm not getting a best feel of. Okay. Um, Number eight is in? Yeah. Number nine. Okay. This part, again, is very sharp in the eyes and in the body. So the feather details and everything are very neat. And I started liking it. But then my eyes go into the back. Um, the background actually is very distracting. Um, it's competing with the bard. And my eyes go on from the bar to the background. And then this, there is this uh, big branch on the right hand corner, top corner, that's coming across um, at an angle. Um, I wish you could have cropped it much tighter so that the attention would have been on the bird or you could have burned the background in such a way that the attention would have been on the bird itself um i, I had to take it this one out because of the distraction in the in the background okay number nine is out number ten this one speaks of the season um this is a season for um, these plans, and, and, and this, this, is, this is well seen. However, there, there are some technical flaws. Um, if you look into it, um, there is an issue of focusing. Going for a macro is, is beautiful, but it's, it's difficult also. Um, when I tried looking into it, some of the leaves have actually um, fallen out of focus. And I'm not sure, when I, when I look into this big thing, I'm not sure what is actually in focus and what do you want to see. Um, stack focusing or using a little bit um, more depth of focus would have given probably a better understanding of what, what you want to see. Like right now, I'm look, trying to look into these white leaves surrounding the yellow uh, buds or whatever that is in the middle, um, and the white leaves are not in focus. At least part of that, I would have preferred to have been on focus. However, the lighting is good, and the positioning of this yellow thing, which is the anchor of the whole image, is perfect. So your, your composition is nice, your lighting is nice, however, the depth of focus or, or sharpness is where it's lacking. So that's why uh, I have to take this one out. Number 10 is out. 11. Okay. So this is where you look into this image and your eyes directly go to the eyes of this image. 
And I think that's where is the success of this image. I look into it. There are a lot of distractions, a lot of colors in here, but your eyes directly go to this subject eyes. And the eyes are very sharp. The face details around the eyes are nice. Um, and the subject look at you. So there is a lot of color, texture, and um, overall, I found it's, it's, it's pretty pretty neat, and it's obviously a, a, a keeper. 11 is in, 12. Another um, cat image. Um, again, this one is directly looking at you, so kudos to uh, the maker, if it's your cat, it's just looking at it, nice expression. Um, however, I was thinking about it like, it's more of a documentary shot. I was thinking, how can you make this image into something that's wow? So, I was thinking about if you go closer, crop tighter, make me look at the face because everything is the, that, that I see in this image as not the owner of the cat, not being um, emotionally attached to the cat, is in the face. So show me the face. Make this one the image, go tighter, crop boldly. That would have made a, a, a different image for me. And then right now, the background, the leaves, it's not working for me. Um, it's just another, right now it's another, just another cat image. I'm sorry, but I really thought that the, just the face part is something with, where you can work with. So maybe if you have a larger image of the uh, version of this image, tight, uh, tightly crop, go for just the face um, and see how that stands up. Uh, for this time, I'll have to take it out. 12 is out. Number 13. Um, my documentary uh, shot a uh, catch of, by, by this, uh, of a fish. Um, nice lighting, and uh, I see there is details still in the white feathers. So, and and the eyes are pretty that sharp. Um, kind of bothered by some of these white uh, green weeds going right next to the uh, bird, actually going into the body of the bird. I wonder if you could have used to clean this up in, in Photoshop or Lightroom. Would that have been better? Um, but for, uh, for this time being, let's give this one in. 13 is in. Number 14. You know, I looked into this and I was thinking I can see a story. Um, it's really beautiful light. Um, the boat is dilapidated. It's maroon, probably. And as the title see, says, I, I can see now it's not seaworthy. And it's absolutely what you have captured tells it. And without even the ca um, caption, one can relate to the story. Very well done in black and white. The details are really great, and it's probably because you have got a fantastic light working with you. The background is being worked out really well. The building in the background are well positioned, stack sharp, and anything, the landmass and all are beautifully burnt or whatever. You have taken care of it. Um, this is obviously a keeper for me. I really like this image. Number 14 is in. Number 15. Well, somebody. Um, worked in monochrome and every, any, whenever somebody takes a photograph in monochrome, it, 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 it kind of piques my interest. This one did too. So I, I tried to look, to look into it. However, I could not find the story. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you are as a, as a photographer wanted me to see. I can see some skylight. I can see, uh, a rooftop. 
with crop branches on the like top half. But I'm, I'm not re- getting the story, and 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 just because that is kind of frustrating me. Um, so and then that's why I have to take it out. And I'm, I'm just not getting or connecting to this image. Fifteen is out. Number sixteen. A nice fall or or a winter um, sunset or eve uh, or evening. The colors are beautiful in the sky. Um, and uh, the bridge is also the architecture works really well. It's just like S car with props of the pillars propping out. So in terms of composition and color, it's it's really neat. What is lacking is is drama or a story. It's like a beautiful scene waiting for something to happen. I wish you would have waited a little longer so I can see those lamps on the bridge. If they would have lit up and you and and then with a like um what I would say like a S twenty two or something, you could have caught the Starburst or something. Something a drama. Uh, like I am just looking for a little drama in here, which is missing at this point. And I know like there are six images that I need and this probably will not stand up in the end with the rest of it. So that's what I'm taking it out. So Nice image, nice composition, light, nice light, lacking the wall factor. Okay, 16 is out. Let me go over and, oh, let's get uh, checked up here. How many do we have? Only keep the images. I have eight images left. Do you have the same? Four, five, six, seven. Yes, I have eight. Perfect. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Um... You can either take out two more, or if you'd like to start placing, you can do that as well. No, let me take out two more uh, two first. That will make my life easier before I, I, I go out. You know? Uh, it's going to be hard. Mm. Let me take out number... What is this? Um... Number four, caught in the moment, I guess. Number four, caught uh, in the moment. Okay, that's out. Yeah, let's take that one out. And uh, number five, this is my catch. And I'm telling you the reason why. If you if you look into two images of Sinola Sart, um, I think there is another image that's stronger than this one. Okay. So let's check four and five out. Five, this is my catch, is out. Yeah. I know which one is num- my number one. You can, so either, can, we still, you can either start from one, one or you can start from honorable mention, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, okay. Let, 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 let's do that. Let's, let's go by honorable mention. So the gondolier is going to be an honorable mention. Number one, honorable mention. Number one, the gondolier is going to be an honorable mention. Got it. Um, Then the dancer, which is number eight, elegant. I'll say that's an honorable mention. Okay. Mm, I would say... The egret um, with the fish is number four. Okay. Uh, catch of the day is number four. Yeah. And then number six in plain view is number three. Number six is third place. Yeah. This would have been number two if everything else was in in, in a better um, focus. I would say, like, I had some issues with the near eye not being in more focus. Um, then, number two is number 11, Spirit of the Woods. And that leaves, what's that, 14, not seaworthy is first place? Yeah, I think I gave it away when I was deciding that wasn't I 
really loved it. Perfect. Okay. Ron, would you like to announce our, our what do you, uh, I need you to come up out of the, uh, out of the speaker though. Otherwise we'll get crazy echoes. Oh. Up there. Okay. Come on up here, Ron. Okay. Okay, it looks like honorable mention. Uh, John, you can correct me if I don't have these right. <clears throat> so honorable mention, we'll start with uh, the gondolier. And uh, that is, uh, that pho the photographer is Harold Crossland. <laughs> he's not, he's not uh, in person this evening, right? Okay, let's see. All right, congratulations, Harold. Uh, our next honorable mention is called Elegant, and that's Ken Temple. Congratulations, Ken. Can you tell us about it? Oh, um, this, this was a studio picture that I was doing, and I was actually on another set, and I did that handheld at a super low um, shutter speed and a very high ISO. Mm -hmm. Image is Catch of the Day, also by Ken Temple. Congratulations, Ken. Uh, I was in a um, park in Charleston, um, South Carolina when I took that photo. And uh, I just happened to catch the bird there trying to get a, a meal for the day. Okay. Uh, Chris, just stay there because uh, the third place image is in plain view. And, uh, oh, that's uh, Ken Temple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was doing a studio shoot with this young lady in DC and we were next to a window, and I purposely took her eye out of focus because what came to mind on this one was the Mardi Gras thing. And you know, the mask was a simulation of being able to mix in with society, but she's not hiding, so I called it in plain view. Okay, and I believe that's a three color uh, ribbon tonight, so congratulations. That that's still three ribbons tonight, so that counts. All right, let's look at uh, Spirit of the Woods, and that's uh, by Harold Crossland. Congratulations, Harold. And our number one image this evening is uh, not seaworthy. Uh, this is image is uh, Kathleen Steele. Congratulations, Kathleen. Uh, yeah, I took that in uh, in Iceland uh, this past year. Uh, I liked it especially because it sort of it, it, yeah, it was an image of the culture. Kathleen, am I correct? You uh, entered that in a pre pre previous contest this year. Am I correct? Yeah, but it didn't place. Okay, well that's a, well, that's one good lesson for everybody. If it didn't go the first time, that doesn't mean it's dead. Bring it back if you think it really has something. You got if you believe in your image, keep on bringing them back. Okay, John, we're back to you. Betty Adam, you did a good job. We made it through that one, and there are no fist fights, so I think we're, we're off to a good start. You didn't sit down yet. <laughs> <laughs> this one is going to be a very hard. Okay, let me get over to our unlimiteds. Okay, I'm going to move some of these panels out of the way. And here. Okay, are we ready? Here we go. Number one is For My Love. Number two, Creative Hands. Number three, Cooking by Candlelight. Number four, Up. Number five, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> Number six, the jump. Number seven, gray parrot. 
Number eight, electrifying music. Number nine, Colorado autumn. Number 10, escaping the maze. 11, the harpist. 12, Modelo. 13, one of those days. 14, artichoke. 15, looking back. 16, Nick and Lahana. 17, Gravity Defiant Surfer. 18, Future Gateway. 19, Evening Lights. 20, Krakow Market Square. Number 21, Glowing Lantern. Number 22, Boom. Number 23, Into the Woods. Number 24, Longwood Gardens. Number 25, Gotham Greats. Number 26, Hello Lunch. Number 27, A Butcher. Number 28, Have You Seen My Canoe? 29, Indigo Bunting. 30, Rosetta. Number 31, Linville Falls. Number 32, a Big Job. Number 33, Horns. Number 34, Milkmaid. Number 35, Sandhill Crane in Flight. Number 36, Huddled. Number 37, Touchdown. Number 38, Seagull. Number 39, Explorer. Number 40, Baby Doll. 41, East Channel Light. 42, Musket Fire. 43, Old Bedford Potter. 44, Gotcha. 45, McPhee. 46, Power. 47, Maybe Not. 48, Abandoned Church. 49, Peekaboo. 50, Calamity Jane Boozing. 51, Melt Your Face Off. 52, through, a covered, through the Covered Bridge. 53, After the Storm. 54, Building Has Eyes. 55, Never Never Give Up. Never Give Up is the title. 
And that is it, 55. First through fourth, and I believe uh, six uh, honorable mentions. Yes. So, in a total of 10. Correct. Okay. Let's start. Before I start, let me remind you one more time. So, this is advanced or unlimited, and you guys are very skilled. So let me tell you, most of these images are technically very good, high quality. What's going to make or break in this case is the creative aspect or the wow factor. And I'll try to tell you, um, I'll give a reason why it might not work for you. And uh, there is a great example that you saw with the winner of the last category is that I heard that that was rejected in some place else and this and today it won the blue ribbon or the, or the first place. So the same thing, if I, if any of your images don't make it, please bring it back because all of them are great. It's an open thing and it might not be in the same wavelength as my thought process today. It could be different. So with that, let me start with this first image, which is for my love. You know, I looked into it, gorgeous colors. Brit. And it tells me of spring. And somebody has taken these images and done something creative. I think it's taken in a studio, kept on a reflective sur surface, photographs, and in Photoshop, somebody has taken the background off. So very well created in um, a controlled atmosphere. So in that way, in terms of creativeness of a very regularly seen for, uh, flower shot, I think it's well done. So let's keep this one for now. Number one is in. Number two. Uh, I looked into it, um, and I looked into it hard. This has a story, an environmental portrait, a story of a potter. Um, and this is where I try to keep my bias. I really like these sort of things. So I try to get the best out. I, I try to look at it more. You know, the Potter's Wheel is, is beautiful. Actually, when it's building up this cup, it's very much in focus. I try to look in the fingers, um, maybe due to the light or whatever. That's where it's, or it's it, because it's shaking. That's what it is a little bit out of uh, focus. I would have been perfect with that. What is distracting for me is the background. This guy's body, as well as the background where you have something blue in the back background and then something orange coming over there. My eyes are going directly over there. Um, and that's competing with the central focus. That's the hand and uh, the clay or pot or whatever that's coming up. And whenever that's happening, it's a distraction. I wish the maker would have darkened the background or done something in photo, uh, Photoshop that my eyes would have just come into the center, which is basically the focal point of this whole image. So I'm taking it out, but I'm, I gave you a long uh, de uh, like description because I just wanted to keep it. Um, but due to those things, I think it would not stand up in the end. That's why let's take this one out. Number two is out. Number three. Yeah. Number three is cooking by candlelight. Yeah, I, I thought that was a very in, in, inviting thing. And I could see myself um, going into one of these period era sort of dramatization things and then and, and get, getting in there. So it's difficult to photograph in this sort of light. Um, and you have done a good job of of photographing this image um, in candlelight, the candles are not completely blown out, and I can see all the details of the of the food that is on the table. Um, and this woman's face is also um, kind of well lit. What is actually bothering me is a lack of a little bit of contrast in here. 
for me, it, it kind of is falling a little flat. And, and I can understand the reason why. Um, you did a good job of bringing the details on the background. I can see the details in the wall and everything. But that kind of um, is offsetting what is on the table. Maybe you could have treated the image differently so that the, the things on the table would have had a, a higher contrast. Um, I'm keeping you this one for now, but if it doesn't come up, it is due to that lack of small details, um, like things on the table could have been much better worked out. The light and everything could have been much better worked out. Um, but I like the drama. I like the tension. Um, let's keep it. Number three is in. Number four. Okay, let me see what is number four. Number four is up, right? Correct. Um, I looked into it. I looked into it hard because I wanted to understand what that thing is going. Um, it's it's kind of abstract. It's kind of crazy. Without that guy going up the escalator, this would have been a, a really abstract stuff. So lots of reflections on a shiny surface. Um, frankly speaking, there are a lot of things I still don't understand how the reflections go and everything, but it doesn't bother me. What I like is the, um, the, the opposite sort of colors coming in, the blue, the orange, and the yellow of the color wheel. And, and then you perfectly put a guy on an escalator, which anchors my eyes into that image. Let's keep it. Number four is in. Number... Let me get over there. Number five. This is a very fun image. And uh, when I looked into it, I was thinking about how you photograph this. Um, obviously, if the ob the, if this thing is, looks very close to the camera. And if the objects are closer than it appears, this, these bisons were probably very close to you. And then I thought, maybe not. Somebody might must have used a very long lens uh, to photograph a mirror, uh, a like side mirror of a car, a different car. But when you make me think this, uh, when think about this thing, something is working and working in your favor. Um, having said that, I understand the difficulty in, in making this image perfect. When you, what you have here is the writing on the mirror. That's very clear. What is not sharp are the bison. I wish those were a little sharper. Um, that would have really made it for me. Otherwise, it's a very um, creative shot. And frankly speaking, um, this is quite well done as opposed to what could have been. Um, for example, the writings are really sharp. However, because the bisons are not, the whole story for me doesn't come up as well. It's a really great try, but I'll have to take it out. Okay. I'm sorry. I, again, I'm, I'm, whenever I'm getting a long discussion, it's because I'm really trying to like it, but there are some reasons I feel that it might not come in the end. That's why I'm taking it out. Okay, number five is out. Number six. Well, there is drama. There is light in there. Um, however, I'm struggling with how it goes. Like, I can see the face. I can see the action. But somehow, the, the person's positioning is a little bit weird. Um, I can see the hands and, and, and things like that means if you'd have taken a burst of shots this is probably not the best shot of the whole series or I'm not understanding it well um, for me due to lack of understanding that's why I have to take it out otherwise you did one thing well that the background doesn't compete with your subject however the subject is not very clear to me um, so that's why I have to take it out Okay, number six is out. Number seven. 
there's another bird shot. Um, the light is kind of model for me. Um, whenever you look into any animal or any uh, or, or or any any portrait sort of thing, your attention immediately goes to the eyes. And over here, the eyes are black. I wish there was a cat's light in the eye or something like that. And it's also kind of, um, I would say, the contrast is not there. Um, that's why I have to take it out. That was out, correct? Yeah. It's like not emotionally appealing to me. Okay, number seven is out. Number eight. Well, I can see uh, there is a story in this image. Um, a slow shutter speed, hand blur. Um, however, I'm not. I'm, I'm not getting anything beyond that. Like this is there is there are two. There's one guy singing and there's another guy looking into it. I'm not sure like what this person is looking into or or what's happening. And the other thing that's really bothering me is. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a sliver of white something on the left of the image, like the, the, the guy with the dark shirt right next to that person. There is a long horizontal line. And when you crop, crop that out, and how come that is adding anything to your image? Actually, whenever you're looking into this image, your eyes go right there. And also a bun bundle of uh, wires on the, on the wall my eyes are going there and I, I don't find anything. So there are lots of things that are not adding to the story. Um, so that's why I think I have to take it out because there are other images that are stronger than this. Eight is out. Number nine. I'm in Colorado. Um, nice time of the year to go there. Serene place. Um, However, I think there are some technical difficulties. What I'm struggling with is, is um, the contrast in this image. I have seen images of Colorado. I haven't been there, but I have seen images that the light and the contrast really pop out these, these um, trees. So when you photograph something that has been photographed a lot, you have to do something to make it really stand out. Um, memorable make it your own and i don't see that in this image um maybe try playing with the contrast a little bit more um particularly the yellows and and and, and where the tree trunks are going in um try to bring more details in there um maybe that will give you a different shot um yeah that's why i i think uh, it would not stand up out against the other images. Let's take this one up. Number nine is out. Number 10. This is an intriguing image. I, I tried looking into it and I, I tried to understand how the maze works. So I'm not sure what's the geometry of the whole thing, how you have photographed this thing. Um, but I can see the fun part. Um, the staircase is going down. The geometric pattern in here is is, is, is really cool. The, but when I'm looking into it, um, what is lacking is it's, it's it's a colored image. I don't I can see the colors, but I don't see much colors popping up. So I was wondering if you could have the same in, image in monochrome and then try playing out with the contrast. Um, and then vignette it, try to take the whole um, focus of this person through these quadrangles in the middle where you can see the, like, the staircase is going down. Like, that is where, for me, is the whole drama. Um, I was wondering if that you could do that and, and that could give you a, another story. So I see all the parts that are really intriguing. But somehow, it's still not giving me that wow factor. It's a wonderful place, but visually, I'm not connecting or I'm not feeling that you're bringing the best out of this wonderful place. So let's keep it for now. If it doesn't work, 
it will be for that. But please take my word. Try putting it in mo uh, monochrome and try playing with the contrast. It, you could have a different image. Keep it for now. 10 is in. And come on, number 11. Okay, it's probably the Renaissance fair that goes on here. I could be wrong. Um, it's an interesting subject, of course. It brings interest. Um, and you've done well capturing this person. The details in the face and everything is really nice. And this is an example where you can see how somebody working with the background pops up the subject and then the background basically fades away. So this is well done. The only beef that I had about it is if I could have an eye connection with this subject, that would have been fantastic. Right now, she's looking at someone else. And I wish for a second, this person would have contact, had made an eye contact with your camera and you could have seen those eyes. Um, let's get this one for now. We'll see how it's going with the, with the red. 11 is in, number 12. One of those days. You know, when I looked into this, I was thinking of a caption called anticipation. Um, I was trying to think about what the, about the story on this. First of all, let me tell you, whoever has done this one, the idea of doing this one in monochrome is, is really good. It makes it a story. Otherwise, it would not have been an image at all, at least for me. Um, however, what is lacking to me is what is the story? I, I tried very hard to understand what is the story. Looking over somebody's shoulder, I see a beer can. Is he waiting for somebody? What's happening? Um, I would have loved to see some more of his, this that person's face. So basically, I see something that piques my interest, but then it's not going anywhere. So that's why I think uh, I'm, I'm kind of feeling that I'm, I'm let down in that case. So that's why I'll probably take it out. But it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good, creative endeavor of going somewhere. Yeah. Let's take it out. Okay. Again, lack of in, uh, connection, not understanding the story. Okay, 12 is out, number 13. Boy, this person has some personality. And uh, when I looked into this guy, I, I was looking into the face, and that has got some character. And whoever is photograph, first of all, again, it's a monochrome. You have done very well. The background is completely out. Attention immediately goes to this subject's face and this face has a beautiful story and you have done a very good job of keeping all the details in the beard it's a white beard and it's done really well um one thing that i was thinking after looking into the image is do you have can you focus right on the face does it tell you a story um and when i was looking into this thing I saw that there is one thing that's written on the on the lower part of the jacket, property of low. I don't know if that's the reason for you to keep the photograph of month until the look the lower part. Otherwise, focusing on the face, maybe just up till the hand that's on the liver, that would have a tighter crop would have been much more intriguing because for me, the drama is in the face in the beard, in the eyes. But that's just me speaking. I like this image. Let's keep this. 13 is in. 14. I'm probably doing a very bad job of uh, taking images out. You, take, um, you, you do it whatever way you want to. We can always go through multiple passes. Yeah. I thought we probably have to. Um, 
again, I thought somebody did a very good job of doing, looking into something in, in monochrome. And then here, the detail and the contrast is fantastic. Very well done and very well processed. However, I'm not having any emotional connection with this thing. It's an art, artichoke. Very well. But I wish you had tried to do something creative like the one of the, uh, the, the image of the flowers, the irises we saw in the beginning. Um, that would have been something that's different. Right now, it's, it's a close-up of an artichoke. Um, is it well done technically? Yes. But I don't see a wall factor. I don't see an emotional connection with this particular image. And that's why I have to take it out. Technically, it's good. Okay, 14 is out. Number 15. Number 15, again, is another example where it's artistic. Uh, um, I would say, like, technically, very well done. If you look into this image, the bald eagle, the face, the, the feather, all the details are there. Nice lighting, very gorgeous. But I have seen this sort of images many a times, and it's another bald eagle. So that's why I'm emotionally not connecting with this thing. Is it beautiful? Is it something that you can put up on your a wall? Probably yes. But in terms of putting that into an uh, open competition, or when it's fighting with images that have got a lot of story, maybe this is not the place. Um, so that's why I have to take it out. Don't see a story. 15 is out. 16. Now, 16 would have had a lot of story. Like, Two subjects balancing on a high wire. However, I see uh, some technical problems with this thing. Um, if I look into this image, I think it was over-processed. If you look into the two subjects, you can see clearly see that um, they have been dodged and uh, the initial capture was not good. So intent was interesting. Subject is interesting. But there are some technical flaws. And I can also see that um, for me, the lower part, whether there's some beautiful sky, that is not adding to the story. I'm confused. Where do you want me to look into the beautiful sky or the dodged um, subjects over there? So these are competing with one another, and that's drawing down my attention. That's why I'm going to take it, this one out. Okay, number 16 is out. 17. Okay, another fast, fast shot, this guy on his surfboard. Um, technically, you have to time it perfectly. You have done it. The lighting is good. Uh, action is great. And when I looked into this guy's facial expression, face ex and the face, that is back sharp. Um, so in terms of technical things, it is very well done. Um, let's keep this one for now and see how it stands up against the rest. 17 is in, 18. Huh. Is that thing in the building of, uh, in the museum building or something like that? It's, it's, it's a connector. I have... Well, it's, it's a kind of intriguing place to go, and it's a nice place to shoot uh, photographs. But frankly speaking, um, I have seen better light in here, and uh, I have seen better drama in here. So that's why. It is a subject that is very well, but very much photographed, that is very much seen. So that's the risk when you put these things in there. It has to be either technically perfect, or it has to have some drama. If you would have another subject moving through um, the rail, like this one right now is far away. If there was a, like, I have seen images where there's a father and a daughter moving on, gives giving some more perspective. Something like that would have made it much more interesting. Right now, it's, it feels like a nice scene without any drama. Something needs to happen. 
Um, that's why, again, I take it out. Not a wow feeling. Okay, 18 is out. Number 19. Festive season. Nice light. Doesn't need to tell you where it is. Again, um, exposure, everything is well handled. I don't see an emotional connection to it. This is a very documentary shot. Um, well done for a, a nice seasonal shot, but I don't see anything happening. I wish there were some subjects do it with inaction or something happening here, something that I haven't seen before. Um, so then again, due to this lack of drama, lack of wow factor, I have to take this one out. Number 19 is out. Number 20. Okay, number 20. Um, same with this one, too. Um, a nice architectural structure. Although when I looked into it, I thought the sky and the building separation, something was wrong in the post-processing. I see a hello around the turret or the top of the building. So not sure what's going on. Again, that's not the main deal breaker here. The deal breaker is lack of action happening. If it's a structural thing, structural team contest, this would have been a different story. Right now, it's just a building with nothing happening. It's not piquing my interest. And that's the reason why I don't see it moving forward. Is that an out for number 20? Yes, yeah, it's out. Yeah. 20 is out. 21. Okay. This is a perfect example why it piques my interest. Whoever has done this, has done a really good job. So uh, this, these things that I see on the ground are probably reflection of light coming through that light source. And that is very well captured. Somebody has gone really well down low, exposed for those designs. So that is something that I don't see regularly. Um, same Longwood Garden probably, looking from the trees. But this is something different than the others that I see. Um, yeah, let's get this one. 21 is in 22. Fireworks, right? It's interesting, um, the way things are going over here. Um, it's well captured, but again, the only interesting thing is the way the, the symmetry on on the two sides. Otherwise, this is again regular fireworks. So things that I have seen a lot, and I, I'm not having an emotional connection with this thing. Like that's that's I mean, yeah. And so I will I will say that's the reason I have to take it out. Is it a good shot? Done it well? Yes, absolutely. 22 but, is out. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's out. Okay, 22 is out. Number 23. It's probably same. Colorado. Done in black and white. Um, it's a good attempt. Trying to go in monochrome takes care of a lot of things. Like, if you don't have a contrast, the colors don't pop, you can always go, and this is some. This has got some infrared feel to it, too. However, having said that, um, this is a good attempt, but this would have been post-process a lot better. For example, the path leading to the scene, this is kind of very flat. I do not see any details in the gravels or um, anything that's in the foreground. They are kind of very 
model. Also, the separation of the um, trees or the treetops against the cloud. Those could have been worked out, like dodging, burning. It, 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 it could have, if you work with this energy, it could make, you could make it better. The other thing that I'm not sure about is I see a lot of hello um, around the tree tops. Is it fog or is it post-processing? I don't know. So that's the reason I'm going to take this one out. Uh, otherwise, it's a good try of taking a and something that would have been very mundane in color. Try to take it in black and white and then post post processing it. So it's a good attempt, but it needs some more work. 23 is out, number 24. A nice documentary shot of Longwood Garden or a similar garden during Christmas, nice Christmas light. Um, again, this is a typical example of a beautiful scenery waiting for something to happen. A drama, some person to pique my interest. Again, by this time, you probably know that that's what I'm looking for, an extra wall factor, boom, boom factor. That is not what I'm seeing over here. Then that's why I have to take it out. 24 is out. 25. You know, this is a kind of very cool perspective. Um, and I see it, it more as an abstract than anything else. Um, lines and curves going in different ways in, against the sky. And I'm telling you, and whoever is the maker, just go home tonight, transfer into monochrome, crank up the, play with the blues, play with your blues when you transfer into monochrome. And then play with the contrast. You will have a different image. Right now, I'm taking this one out, but come back and some other person will give you, it'll give you a much better rating. Maybe it will be one of the Chapman's top most images. This has got really great bones, but not for tonight. Um, I'm taking, going to take this one out, but I would love, love to see it coming back as a monochrome with, when you work on the contrast. 25 is out, number 26. Twenty six is Hello Lunch. Very well done. I have nothing to say. Um, as you can see, back sharp, action, beautiful lighting. Have I seen this a lot? Yes, I have. But that does not mean that it takes anything out or away from what you have achieved over here. Nice shot. It's a keeper. 26 is in 27. You know, I looked into um, the title of this image, and it says Butcher. and. Frankly speaking, there's no way for me to understand anything about it, visually how it relates to a butcher. I wish there was something hanging, like a piece of meat or something, that would have tied the whole story. Unless Mastelaria or what I was written in means butcher in, in that particular language. Um, the other thing that I wish would have been much better if the subject is, has got an interesting attitude. I wish this guy was looking at me. He's looking at someplace else and he is standing and looking at just the side. Um, placement is very important. Visual um, is very important in image because it generates interest, it gen generates dynamism within an image. If this guy would have been standing on the left side looking at you, if you'd have given him some space, that would have been different. But he is standing on the right side and looking at the right side. So it, it feels like it's, there's a story and I'm not feeling it. 
So basically, due to lack of understanding of the whole story, I'm, I'm taking it out. But it's good lighting. You've got a, a, a interesting subject, but the story is missing. Okay, um, tw- 27 is out, 28. Wow. This is visually really stunning. Um, yeah. Very well done, monochrome. Nice lighting. And you have dealt with it very well. Um, some details in the, in the reflections on the tree. It, it's really good. The only thing that I was thinking is if you could crop a little bit out on the right side, so the canoe, the, the, on the right most that is partially cropped, was it necessary? Now that I look into, maybe yes. Um, no, or maybe not. You could have cropped that out. Um, that Even then, you could have a, a, a nice image. Um, however, I still like this one. So, it's a keeper. Let's get this thing. 28 is in, 29. The yellow bunting, the indigo bunting, right? Um, nice shot. Well done. But for me, um, the colors are a little off. So it, it looks like it's a cloudy day. The vibrance is a little off. It, it's, it's got a tinge of blue to this image. Um, so maybe use a, a color setting, like different color setting, like warm up the um, temperature. Like you could easily go into develop mode and put a cloudy cl- color setting. So that will warm it up. Um, and frankly speaking, I have seen better indigo bunting pictures than this. Um, when you're photographing something that's local, when you're photographing something that people have seen a lot, you need to have that um factor that makes it stand out. And it's particularly when judges come in, they have these things aged in their heads. Um, this is a beautiful picture, but it's, 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 it's not something that I have not seen before. So that's the reason I'm taking it out. And then technically, like, the color, the color balance is a little off, too. 29 is out. Number 30. Lovely subject. Um, Looking at you. Um, Details are very well done. Uh, The decision to do it in sepia gives it a nice... um, I would say like time sensitive thing and it, it takes you back and is very um, well coordinated with the dress of the subject. Um, I wish the lighting was a little different. What's bothering me, and I'm, I'm trying to nitpick here, is in the left hand upper corner, the sky that you see, it's a lot of empty space. I wonder if you would have gone put it a little bit to your left. So you had all those trees, which is, which are very, which is very well blurred. If that would have been your complete background. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about it. So let's get this one for now uh, and, and, and see how it's, how it stands up with the rest of the images. Okay. 30 is in number 31. Very serene place. I wonder where it is. Um, technically very well done for the reason that your water is blur, blurry, white, and yet you have the detail in the water. So technically it's very well done. Again, the thing that I'm lacking is some drama. What's happening in here? What's the best part? Um, if you look into images that National Geographic or any any place that they have, is they will have 
a person standing or something, a, a, a different pop of color, something that, like when you're looking around, is like a gem that you find. That is what I looked a lot into this image and I could not find. And that makes me feel that it's something that I, I have seen a lot sort of thing. So due to the lack of drama again, I think this might not stand up in the end. So let's take this one out. 31 is out. Number 32. Well seen and well captured. Right, like these rusty automobiles, these are treasure troves when you go and, and, and photograph. So somebody has done it and, and done it done it well. I, I can see all the details of this car, the rusted car on, on here. Well done. The one thing that I would say I would have loved if you would have played with the contrast a little bit more. And I think playing with the shade, shadows, uh, contrast, or even the dehaze, just go in and, and, and look into the dehaze and, and do the clarity. This is going to give you a different sort of image. This is where you can go bonkers with it. You have got different colors, R the, the orange, rusty red, then this blue thing on the rig on the blue uh, big job logo. These are complementary colors. Play with them. Play with the contrast. Zinni it at the bottom so that your eyes go to the four seven fifty and big job right over there. You will have a much better image. However, having said that, I like it. Let's skip this one. But if this one doesn't come, go right now. What I would suggest. Do these changes, bring it back, and maybe bring it as a print on a metallic paper. I, I can see this one will sing. Okay, 32 is in. Number 33. Number 33 is really uh, about colors. I looked into it, a lot of colors and, and lines probably coming up. Um, However, I'm not sure the contrast is great. And, you know, it, I would have to say it, it, it's, the subject is also not that interesting when you look into it. And frankly speaking, in, with respect to the other images that I see, I don't see this one will come on. So kudos on the, uh, to the um, maker for looking into something very mundane and trying to make it an, an art, but try something different um, in the way, put your stamp, try to make it stand out. Right now, it's rather documentary. Um, try to work out um, to make it really pop. Let's take this one out. 33 is out, number 34. Well. Talk of drama, this one is here. Very well done uh, in terms of lighting. And I looked into it, fantastic detail. Fantastic details on the face, on the eyes. You can see uh, every detail on this person's face. Every pimple. And that's because of the light. That single source of light that falls is it, it, bringing all the details out. So. Very well done. If you have utilized artificial lighting for this person, uh, to photograph this person, you have done really well. Um, the only comment that I would say is I would have tried to burn the space right next to the left elbow um, so that your um, that's where you can see more, more most of the background. It, 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 where the light falls on the background, um, the wall and, 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 and the seat where this person is seating, just use to burn that thing so that the whole um, drama is in the face, in, in the dress. Uh, this is a keeper. This is a keeper. Okay, number 34 okay. is in 35. I don't know. This is a bird shot, dynamic bird shot. 
um, shooting them, shooting like taking a bird shot during flight is is, is not easy. Um, however, I see that it's been post process, and I'm not sure if the post processing is is too much because around the um, on the wingtip, it seems like I can see halo. Um, and I've seen better things. I, mean, I, I would say the contrast on, on, on the, the body of this um, bird is also not the best. So let's take this one out. Okay, 35 is out. 36. Emperor penguins. Um, it's an interesting position, but I don't know if this was shot through glass or something. I don't think these two subjects are tack in focus. Um, and the other thing that I looked into it, I have photographed these, and uh, you can see them a lot if you go down to um, Florida area because. And a lot of them are kept behind glass. If you're not in, um, in an Arctic or Antarctic where there are native places, you can shoot them here. But when you look into these, wait until they open an eye. So that gives a different pop to it. Otherwise, two birds with their face and beak down and, and not everything is in focus. Because to me, the focus is actually in the back place, in, the, in, in, in bird number two, if you look into its feather in the bottom portion, that is in focus. Bird number one, its feather is not. Um, and due to that, I have to take this one out. Okay, 36 is out. 37. Sports action. Very interesting story. This quarterback or whoever is moving through. Um, you know, it's a nice documentary shot. It can go into your local newspaper, but I'm thinking about is it something that will pop in, a, in an open competition? And that's where I'm struggling. I can see this guy with the ball, his face. It's very intense. I wish you would have um, focused on that. That, that intent in his face and in his action, and he, he should have propped it much more. Um, I'm trying to make ways so that it, it's more artsy. Right now it's more documentary, and, and the lighting is probably um, an artificial lighting, so that's also creating some problems. Um, it's a good Sports um, and action image, maybe good for a different themed um, competition, but right now I don't see it working for me tonight. That's why let's take this one out. 37 is out. 38. Okay, 38 is the seagull. You know, it's, it's, it's very artsy. So if your intent was to post process and make it in a, in a very art, artsy way so that it can become a book cover or something, you have perfectly succeeded. Um, but, you know, I was looking for something different. So um, I do not see it standing with the rest of the images that I'm picking up tonight. Um, if it's a post-processing or something like that competition, it will probably be a very worthy thing. But for, for some reason, my thought process is not in the same line as yours. That's what I'm taking it out. 38 is out. 39. Explorer. I thought it's a fun image. Whatever, whoever has done it has really done it well. I looked into this guy's face going through this thing. 
Uh, it's not that sharp, but it, 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 it's fun overall. Um, and the lighting is very neat. So I, I, I can see where you have taken your artistic liberties, and I, I, I applaud that. Let's get this thing in. 39 is in, 40. This is amazing. This is amazing. Um, somebody looked into something very mundane and found out a story, an incredible story. I looked into this image and I see a face. And I, I'm sure a lot of you do too. Um, the two eyes and the nose and some hair in cracked mud. Very well done. It's, it's, a, it's a keeper. 40 is in, 41. Serene area brings memories of fall in New England. Nice lighting. Um, however, what I see is basically the lighthouse. Within a, a nicely lit lighthouse. I wish there was something else to glorify this wonderful place. Some subject, something else to catch my attention. Right now, again, it's looked like a beautiful stage waiting for something to happen. Um, but I like the light. I like the colors. So I'm going to keep this one out. Uh, I'll keep this one in for a while because I really like the lighting and then the textures that you've got on the building. But if it doesn't make it through, it's because, again, it's the lack of the wall factor. But like now, the only wall factor is the light. Um, I wish you had something. It's, I don't know. Like, sometimes it's very difficult. Like, you do not, you may not, may or may not have a person standing over there or, or doing some, something happening. I wish you had that. Anyway, um, let's skip this one for now and, and then move on to the next. 41 is in, 42. It's a nice documentary shot, well lit, and well done in monochrome. Um, and the details in the grass and everywhere is nice. So again, let's get this one in for now, because I think it's, it's, it's got, technically it's well done and I, I got us story in there. It's a different story if it's that um, what I see in here, if that makes a story that's appealing to me. But whatever you wanted to show, you have, you have captured it and captured it technically very well. So keep it for now. 42 is in. 43. Huh. I wonder if it's the same guy that we shot, uh, saw a shot of um, a close close of the the hands and the and the water's wheel. Um, again, I think the same thing is my botheration is the background competing with the person. I wonder if you would have done it in black and white. I wonder if you could have taken the background weren't it so that my whole attention is goes to this person and the photos will. Otherwise it's a nice documentary shot, but something that I have seen a lot. Um and due to that lack of interest I have to take this one out. Forty three is out. Oh, let me try that again. Forty three is out. Forty four. Now where is 44 is, well, 44 is this nice eagle shot. Again, this is a very, a shot that we probably all have seen staying in this area in different competitions. Um, but there, there are some shots that even if you've seen a lot, you still appreciate when you see it well done. And in this case, I think it's, it's, it's pretty well done. I looked into the bird's face and all, 
it's pretty sharp. Although uh, with the post-processing, you can see some noise, but that's understandable. We probably had to do a very high ISO sort of thing to go into it. But technically, it's pretty well done. I wish the lighting was a little bit better for you, but even then, nice, perfect action shot, and, and things are, whatever needs to be in that sharp focus is in that sharp focus. So this is in. 44 is in, 45. Okay. Um, it's a nice documentary shot. The light on the hand and, and um, the instrument is pretty dramatic, I would say. Um, however, I would have loved to see a little bit of light on this person's face. Otherwise, this is a nice documentary shot that is, again, lacking some trauma. Um, and I think that's why it's not going to stand up with the rest of the images that we have seen so far in the night. So that's the reason I have to take it out. 45 is out. 46. Speaking of drama, I see a lot of drama in this thing. And I was thinking, how could I call it? Like somebody called it power. I thought it's resilience. This particular plant or tree or shrub standing against this force of nature with this amount of water speaks of, speaks of resilience to me. Um, first of all, technically, it's very well done. Nice shot. You froze the water. And the best thing that you've done is you have kept the details in this water. And I was looking into it, and, and, and I think this is very, very, very well done. This is this is a nice image. So let's keep this thing in. Forty six is in forty seven. Old rusty factory. You know, I don't even bother if that thing clean is written. Probably that's a cliche thing, and then that's what probably caught your attention. But you know what I was looking into is this rusty um, old containers. Um, and I was hoping, and I was looking at the geometric part, the curves, the straight lines that are going through it. And I found that much more interesting than just that writing, the clean thing. I think I see there is a humor part, but I was looking into more in, in, through an artistic um, from an artistic angle. And I thought, when I was looking into there, my eyes went up, and I could see the railing, and then there is some, um, I would say, like, ground or, or some background popping out. That's where my eye goes. And that's where the visual harmony falls off, right in that, in that gap. I wish you would have cropped it right where the railings were. So take the railing off and see how this one comes up. Even that clean thing, try cleaning that up and just show, so that it becomes lines, rivets, and all that rust and see how that lines up. Right now, in this present, uh, in its present form, it's not as appealing to me. And that's why I'm going to take this one out. 47 is out, 48. Nice desolate building. So good job in capturing uh, a nice desolate charge over here. However, um, when I looked into this in a hundred percent size, I'm not sure um, if this this thing was was shot in sharp focus or you did something to the in in post processing that gives it a it, it a weird feeling and. For some reason, I'm, I'm not with your artistic um, option that you have taken. And that's why I have to take this one out. And I, it's basically the post-processing is not what 
I'm liking here. Okay, 48 is out. 49. Okay, a mother and a cat. Um, again, I'm trying to think about what is the story. I see the peekaboo king. Um, but you know, the two bo- the, the 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 two fins things, the two logs. This is where my eyes go, and I get stuck. It gets stuck, and it's not working for me. I can see how it, how you want me to look into the two eyes of the two different animals, but you know, still the bar on the on the on the bottom, particularly the lower bar, uh, is where it's going through the face of the cat. I just can't look beyond that, and it's just not. I'm just not getting wowed by the peekaboo story. Um, that's why, like, a lack of emotional connection with this thing. I have to take this one out. 49 is out. Number 50. Okay, number 50. Oh, is this Calamity Jane? Uh, yeah, it's a Calamity Jane, right? Correct. Okay. I, I, I thought that was a nice... Uh, there, was an, there was a story in there. Like, who is she? Like, uh, what does she do after she gets drunk? Um, yeah. You, you've got a person doing it in monochrome raises that interest. Um, but this is an example where cropping tight is just making me look into this person and then I'm not sure what she wants to do what is around her. Um, and that's where I'm not getting my story. So if, you, if, if you're looking into this person, the lighting, the detail, technically it's well done, but I'm not going beyond the fact that this person is drinking. The, the calamity gene, losing, yeah, is documentary, but it's not giving me the story. So, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm talking to myself and trying to get an emotional connection which I'm not getting. Um, and I thought that there are some of the other images, the portraits that I saw, I, I, I could connect more. So that's why I'm taking this one out. 50 is out, 51. Well, this is, this is an interesting um, image, to say the least. Um, the choice of using a shutter speed and and the, the and those light thing that's coming out from the face gives a sort of dynamic thing. Um, just try to do something different. So let's give you credit for that. However, that having been right on the face, I'm, I'm trying to think: is does that help? Had it been on the on the hands, that would have been much more cooler because I don't know, like if the hands were still and this person was shaking the head, whatever it is, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, let's skip this one for now because, again, I have to look in with the rest of the things. Okay, 51 is in, 52. 52. Covered bridges, something I really love photographing. But um, again, you have photographed it well. The perspective, you have kept it well. Again, I'm probably like a broken record. It's a nice place, nice light. You've got it well. But it's a beautiful scenario waiting for something to happen. Like if it's a bridge theme thing, it's probably an interesting image because you've got the details, you've got the colors. But right now, this plank thing right through the middle, I'm looking for something there, and I'm not finding. So I'm not find, getting that emotional connection. And that's why I had to take this one out. 52 is out. 53. 
you know, it's 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 it's, it's a ride of colors, actually. Um, oranges, blues, beautiful waves, very well done. Um, the reflection on the beach with the receding water, capturing the orange hue, very well done. You've got three birds coming in odd numbers, all busy, adds to the uh, scene. The, the cloud on the top with the details, fantastic. But you know what is putting my visual dynamic thing off is that orange sky on the top. A lot of orange on the top. And so my eyes go over there. And then there is nothing. If I look in the bottom, there is a lot of nice things. And subtle oranges, tree birds. So think about this. What happens if you crop the orange part on the top? If it's just the waves and the, and the little thing below. I know the clouds are nice and I will be enticed to keep them. but Having that orange, does it help? Let's skip this one for now. Um, I want to see how it goes on, but that orange part on the top is bothering me. 53 is in 54. I try to, these sort of things that I don't understand pique my interest. I spend a lot of time and that, that's a good thing. I was trying to think if it's something that you caught on a building or is it something that you flipped um, in Photoshop and, and, and try to create this visual, visually attractive thing. And I think it's probably something repeated in photograph, uh, in Photoshop. It's just a mirror thing. And that's where I'm kind of like, Caught on, like, what it is. And again, like this sienna or the, the, the reddish or orangish thing, which is the, your background, that is too much real estate where my eyes go and I, I don't see anything. So if you have something on that edge, either darken it so that your eyes immediately go to uh, the interesting part. Um, yeah, overall, I'm not very much in sync with this artistic creation. So that's why I'm taking it out. 54 is out, 55. Huh. I see um, the photographer tries to tell you a story, never give up, like a small, a tiny building. Old dilapidated building between two high rises. Is that what caught your attention? Could be. But having said that, what I can't get past is the architectural thing. Um, the perspective is completely off. It's, it's, it's bent down in a way. You could have fixed it, yet you could have shown that thing right now, excepting for that. Never give up what's written on that particular building. I'm not getting your story. Um, and that's why I have to take it out. 55 is out. And I believe that's it. That is it. Let's see what we have uh, total here. All right, bring this filter up. So in my thing, I have to like six, seven, fourteen. I've got eighteen. Um, is that what you have? I have twenty-one. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go through the images one by one, and we'll see where we went wrong. Yeah. Uh, for the ends, I have number one, mm -hmm. number three, number okay. four. Number one, 
Number three. Mm -hmm. Number four. Number four. Okay. Number, number ten. Four. Ten. Ten. Yeah. Eleven. Eleven. Thirteen. Thirteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Yes, twenty-six. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Thirty. Thirty. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine is the booty girl. Right? What's that? Oh no, 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 no. Thirty-nine here. Yeah. Thirty-nine and forty. Mm -hmm. Forty. Thirty-nine. 40. I got thirty-nine and forty. So you have thirty-nine and forty in. Yeah. Okay, forty-one. Forty-one. Forty-two. Forty-two. Forty-four. Forty-four. Forty-six. Forty-six. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. And fifty-three. Fifty-three. Okay. Three, no. four, six, seven, eight, sixteen. Yeah. So we need to get rid of uh, 11. We can either go through them again, or if you'd like to pick and, and uh, pick out the, uh, the winners, then we can drop the, the remaining off, whichever way you'd like to do it. Uh, let me see. So how many do I have to take out now? Um, you need 11 to take out. That would leave us with 10. Is that right? Yeah, you know, one through four and six. Yes, Ron's giving me the, the, the yes. So let, let us take some of the ones out right now. Let's take out number ten. Is that escaping the maze? Yes. Yes, number ten is out. Um. Hard. Number 30. Number 30, which one is that? Rosetta. Okay. <laughs> number 30 is out. Um, the number 51, milk on your face. I thought that's creative. Number 51, melt your face off, okay. That one's out. Yeah. Um, for the lack of this thing, like, let's take number one out, although I thought that was well done. Number one for my love? Yeah. Number one is out. Now you have, well here I'm just being ruthless. Um, number three, cooking by candlelight. Number three, cooking by candlelight is out. Six to go. Oh no. Or as I said, we um, can go the other way too. Now let's, let's do this. Number 11. Number 11, is that the harpist? Yes. Yeah. Harpist is out. Mm, that's hard. Let's take number 53 out. 53, that is after the storm, that is out. Mm, how many? One, two, three, four, five. Four more. Four more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> number 39. Number 39, which one is that? Is that the? The no? Explorer. Explorer? I thought that, that was fully done. Okay, 39 is out. 
Ух. Three more. Three more. Mm -hmm. With very much broken heart, um, the song for number 17. Number 17, Gravity Defiant Surfer is out. Um, I will take number four out. Which number is that? Mm -hmm. Num num number four. Oops. Now don't tell me why. Whoever is the maker, I, I have not nothing to do with. Just you guys are too good. And you're saying number four up, right? Yeah, number four is out. Okay, number four up is out. Up and out. One more, then we can start moving. You know. Let's take the Longwood Garden thing out, but very that that image is also very well done, and I, I love that. Um, but I can I, I can see some flaws in there that people actually. Which yeah, number is that? Um, let me tell you, number twenty-one, glowing lantern. Okay, twenty-one, glowing lantern is out. We now have enough to start placing. Six honorable mentions and first through fourth in whichever uh, direction you want to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do this. Number, I know number one. Can I go with number one? Or you guys want drama? We always um, want drama. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this. Um, we want four top list ones, right? So let's go by that. Okay, first um, through fourth. Um, this one, number 28, is number four for me. Have you seen my canoe is number four? Yeah. I like the way it's played. I like the light and, and like the geometric thing. Um, that's number four. Mm -hmm. Number two is the lady, and that is, let me tell you what it is. Number 34, Milkmaid. Milkmaid, what placement would you like to give that one? That's three. Okay. That was really, that, that, that was really well done. Milkmaid is third. Number two is 46, Power. 46, Power is second place. Yeah. Okay. And numero uno is Foxy Baby Doll. I thought that is amazing. Whoever did it, it's, it's, it's a brilliant. And uh, number one, uh, first place is number 40, Baby Doll. We're going to throw all these other ones into the honorable mention category. Ron, would you like to come up and uh, announce our winners? And those are all great. And I threw out some great photographs, and I have to go to bed with that in my mind. Okay. That was a tough slog through those, um, but Yadam, I really, we all appreciate it. We're all sitting on the uh, edges of our seats through that, so thank you. And uh, a lot of good feedback on images, and I know people are going to get back and work on some of these things, so uh, thank you for all of that. So let's take a look at what we have. Um, honorable mention, uh, John, you can correct me on all my mistakes here. I'll make a few of those. Uh-oh. All right, this is a uh, gotcha, honorable mention. That's the eagle, and that's uh, Fred, Fred Venetian. Congratulations, Fred. That was, a, that was kind of a difficult shot. It almost got kicked out. I almost, I almost deleted it. What happened was uh, uh, the water was running really, really fast, and uh, she was trying to catch it. And I was running beside her, and she was stuck in the water. And it had so much power. When she came up out of that water with that fish, I couldn't believe it because 
the water was going super fast. I was running right down the side. And then what happened was she dropped it. And it, she went after it again and got it again. And that's the second time she got it. And by that time, we were all the way down the other side of the parking lot almost. But it was really, really terrible light. Yeah, you're right. It's got noise in it. Uh, I could have done a better job, but it was, the light was terrible. And I was carrying, I was carrying the, the lens at the same time. Well, what happened was she was in the water. Okay, when she got down in that water, she was all the way up to here, to her neck. Okay, and so she came up and she had that fish. And you see all the water coming out? I mean, it was like unbelievable, but it had some noise in it. I mean, I had to shoot it real hard. I was shooting somewhere about 6,400 plus. Quite cool. All right, John, we're looking at uh, the musket fire, and that's Don Granis. That's also, also our next honorable mention. <laughs> Don's not here this evening. Our next honorable mention is East Channel Light, and uh, that's by Chuck Gallegos, and uh, Chuck is not here this evening. This one I had my eye on when it came up the first time. I, I really kind of like, I like rust. Rust is quite cool. All right. John, what's the number for that one? I'm having a hard time. 32, and that is Kathy Hockle, I believe. It is Kathy Hockle. Yes, I, we were, uh, that's the graveyard for the trucks in outside of Charlottesville. I'm sorry, that was in Charlottesville at that graveyard of trucks. Charlottesville, wow. Mm -hmm. And it's honorable mention, and he gave you some uh, suggestions, yes, and you could go back, yeah. Do everything you said. Quite yeah. cool, quite cool. Okay, John, is that uh, four honorables? I don't know. Is that your count? Let me go back. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, this one is uh, fourth place. Nope. Nope, still two more animals. Oh, two more, okay. Uh, this one I know, it's mine, it's on, uh, Hello Lunch. Uh, I was in um, Blackwater um, in October, I believe it was, October, November, and the very, at the very end of the day, sun was low coming through and there was just nothing. It came around the bend and just stood there for a long time and f saw a little bit of action through the weeds, took a little bit of time, and I must have shot probably 200 or 300 pictures of that fastest speed I, I could, so uh, it was kind of fun. And still, I don't look at it too closely, it's still not as sharp as I wanted it to be, sorry about that. Okay, that's R4, okay. Okay, now we're, I think this is our last honorable mention. Okay. Apologize. The, uh, a little different way of doing this. And, um, uh, John, John, you're going to have to uh, read that one. I do not see it. That's you? Okay. It's at the Sturgis uh, Bike Rally. Okay. One of the bikers. Is that... What's the name? What's the title of that one, Kathy? Excuse me? What's the title of that one? One of those days. One of those days. One of those days, okay. Uh, I want to make sure I get the list right. Okay, congratulations. Okay, on to the next, and this is, a, this is a fourth place. I've been trying to read here four times now, so sorry about that. Have you seen my canoe? Uh, uh, congratulations to Clarence Carvel. Okay, and uh, all Clarence right. says that was shot on a Hasselblad and scanned in. Very nice, Clarence. Okay, uh, th this is uh, third place. This is my uh, image, uh, Milkmaid, and. Um, at the, um, some of us have been to Barnstormers, remember this lady. And you remember they tight, you need good light. The barn door was open, the light was there, and so I just had to shoot it. So it was kind of fun, and she actually uh, said, wait a minute, I've done posing, let me, let me get this cup. And so she set herself up for this, it was kind of funny. Ron, is that a wheelchair? 
No, I don't think so. I no. see a little bit yeah, of... It was a little aluminum um, a portable chair, it looked like to me anyway. Us crazy reenactors, we pick up on that. Okay, stuff. good. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Uh, second place then is Power, and that's Debbie Wolf. Congratulations, Debbie. And Debbie's not here this evening as well. Debbie okay. says, I went on a photo shoot with a couple of friends in New York after a huge rain. It was cool because we got our own different stories with our versions of the waterfall. I like the power of the water and the power in that little tree. Yeah, that, it is cool. You just really get the feeling of the, of the power. Yeah, that's great. And that tree is sharp as a tack with everything else going on around it. Very cool. Okay, uh, this is uh, first place, and this is uh, called Baby Doll, and that is my image as well. And uh, so, apologies tonight, I didn't, I just grabbed three. So this one was shot um, at the World War I Museum in Kansas City uh, this summer. And um, the museum was generally not real exciting, but I came past this case and uh, this doll um, or, was an artifact there and um, I had my, uh, I had an F2 lens on it. It was wide open and uh, not very good light, so that's how, why it ended up looking like it did. It was, it was a fun picture to shoot. So, thank you. Well, John, I guess that wraps it up for this evening. And, um, it, uh, Ron, I'm gonna say one thing. If that ends up being our photo of the year, I'm gonna be very horrified and disappointed. Okay. As amazing <laughs> as that is, I, I don't know if that should be our photo yeah, of the right. year. I got you. But I hope you do well with it. Yeah, exactly. uh, yeah that's a, and that's a tricolor ribbon for Ron as well. So congratulations, Ron. And we want to uh, express our thanks to our judge again this evening. Uh, Betty Adam uh, has done a judge for us a couple of times before. He is an MPA judge. And by the way, the reason uh, you don't see Bob Weber here this evening is he's out doing his first judging tonight as an MPA. So we're hopes are with uh, Bob this evening. So thank you, everybody. John? Thank you, Betty I'm, I'm not sure if you're still with us or not. Yes, I am. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I want to tell everybody, uh, if you weren't here to talk about your image uh, in person, please post it to your image to the Facebook group and give us a little bit of details for that. Uh, with that, unless you have any closing comments, Bidi Adam, uh, I want to say goodnight to you and thank you so much. Thank you again. Like, it, it, it was really a pleasure. Uh, of course, like I said, you all, all probably sent my pain and taking out some of the images in the end, I thought. All of them are winners in my mind, even if you don't get driven. So thank you for the opportunity to see some great images. These are all inspirations that uh, I take home as a, as a judge. So thank you for the opportunity. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and good night. Good night. Okay, we're going to end it here. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next week for Christine has run off, and I don't have the calendar, so there's something to be good next week. I hope you join us then. Good night.